But here, take a look at the entire power rankings here from our Pete Prisco. Again, Niners State number one. Chiefs, the best team in the AFC, coming in at number four. Now, if we focus on the top ten here, some notable movements had the Cowboys coming up, as I mentioned. The Jaguars lose to the Chiefs, but still remain in the top ten, according to Pete Prisco. But a handful of teams have moved in, including the Bills, the Commanders, and the Saints, all in Prisco's top ten this week. All right, we bring in Mr. Power Rankings, Pete Prisco. We've also got Brady Quinn. To I, invent, I invented those, you know. I know, I love these. This is my favorite sound. <laughs> I the did. God, the God we were the invented power, power Rankings. We were the, first, we were the first site to do Power Rankings, and I was the first guy and to do them. And it's Pete Prisco's Power Rankings. Double P, fantastic. double P, quad P? No, quad P. Ever got, I, grandfather P. invented the Power Rankings. Yes, I'm like, yeah, what? Ta Bell and Edison, Crisco <laughs> invented the power rankings. Yeah. Oh, I gotta update that. I didn't know that. I gotta, yeah. I gotta put that in your Wikipedia. Actually, that we've got to do that. It was Pete. somebody's idea here, and I just followed along. Okay, yeah. but now it's yours to claim. Yeah. Uh, let's get to to the very top here. San Francisco by winning, and, and I don't know if there's uh, any disagreement there because you had them at number one this week. But I think moving Philly down and Dallas up, take us through the thought process with that top three. Philly hasn't looked good, and, and you know I was talking to somebody in the organization, and they were saying, "Yeah, we haven't looked great, but we're two and zero." And I'm like, "Okay, that's great, but they just don't look right to me." They didn't look right uh, offensively for much of that game. Now they ran it down the Vikings' throats in the second half. I got to give them credit for that, but defensively, I still like. Where's Reddick? You know, Reddick was a big part of their defense. He's a no-show so far. Yeah, the young defensive tackles are, are playing well. Yeah. I just think there's something off. And Dallas has been so dominant on the defense side of the ball, which is why I moved them up. A couple of things. I mean, for starters, you've got an offensive coordinator, right, who's still trying to find himself within this offense, play calling his only identity. Same thing on the defensive side of the ball, a new defensive coordinator, right? I think that plays a little bit of a role. Look, a win versus Bill Belichick and the Patriots – week one like that to me is a win okay bottom line is you, you won that game you get out of it you know with all the newness I think and I think we look at them as a Super Bowl contender but the reality is they've got some adjustments on their coaching staff that I think are a lot harder to find themselves through so their best football I think is ahead of them um, their roster is too talented that's kind of what's carried them I think the first couple of weeks but but I'm with you I mean they haven't looked quite as dominant as we are accustomed to seeing them look based on last year I, I still think this is one of the top teams in, in the league no oh, doubt about I, it. I agree with I, you I, I think the interesting thing, though, is, you know, the way things have started out for Kansas City, you've now got three NFC teams at the top right. of your list. I know. KC at four. And it's, a, it's just a bit surprising because coming into the season, I think we always feel like Kansas City is still the team you got to beat if you want to win a Super Bowl. And we thought the AFC would be at the top because of all the Tough quarterbacks in the mm -hmm. AFC. And we thought, oh, boy, these teams are all going to be there. And they still might get there. It's so early, like you always say. But... The one thing about Dallas is Dallas' defense is dominant. It really dominant. And that that could carry you a long way. The Eagles can get there. They're missing guys. No Bradbury, no Blankenship is a really good player, no N'Kobe Dean. So they were missing guys. Which offense looks better between Dallas and the Eagles, right? Because you said the defense of Dallas looks better, yeah, I agree. I, I don't think either one of them looks that great. But who would but you give the nod to? Well, I'd probably give it to the Cowboys. Okay. I, I, I was going to say. I think Hurts has been a little off. A, li a, a little bit. I would still give the Philly offense right now. The I think the Philly Dallas. offense will end up being better. Yeah. But I, but I think the Dallas offense right now is right there with them. So Brady mentioned Kansas City holds steady at number four. Now you do have the Ravens and the Dolphins moving up slightly, but not leapfrogging the champs here. Take me through the thought process of keeping KC where they were at. After yeah, that and I thought about moving Miami up after what they did going on the road and winning two games. And, and they did not they did it differently, Miami did. Just the back-to-back -back road games really didn't yeah, matter coast there. Coast to coast. Well, coast to coast. Back-to-back -back road games. could have if it was another inch, maybe. Yeah. Yeah? I mean, they could have. They could have. They did what they, the Patriots did what I thought they would do to Miami's offense. But give credit to Miami, they turned it around. But as far as Kansas City, Kansas City is still going to be there the whole time. They got Kelsey back. The offense still wasn't explosive, but the best news about Kansas City, their defense in two games against two good offensive teams, have, they've been really good. You talk about 14 points to the Lions and, and what, six to the Jaguars? I mean, you're, you're going to win a lot of games when you do that. And so I think from that standpoint, uh, or actually nine, from that standpoint, 
that's the surprise for the Chiefs is the defense. I don't know if it was a surprise. I mean, we kind of saw them coming on last year as a young defense. We talked about all the rookies in the secondary. They're all growing up. They're all coming to age, and I think they're able to provide that stability where the offense is still trying to find the playmaker outside of Travis Kelsey. And I know you're going to hate me saying this, but maybe it's Isaiah Pacheco. I tried to tell you that before this week's game. He averaged at 1.10 yards per attempt running the football. It ended up being six when it was all said and done. But outside of Kelsey, to me, he's the next most consistent piece. They got to find a way of getting Pacheco the football in the passing game in space. You could be a little more balanced handing the football off and then find easier ways of getting Sky Moore and Kadarius Tony and Marquez Valdez Scanling and Rasheed Rice, all these guys, easier one-on-one -on -one opportunities off of that. I'm not saying you're taking the ball no, out of Mahomes. And hands. you didn't have and by the way, you didn't have to run the ball against that Jacksonville offense on Sunday to keep them off the field because they weren't very good. Well, and the other thing we more, said how on many Sunday, more fourth downs is, we thought Chris Jones, we thought Chris Jones might be in a pitch count no. oh no oh no right in dominant dominated the entire game whether it was over the guard whether it was over the tackle just pushed the pocket he was dominant if we get back to the Dolphins everyone's seeing Mike McDaniel running off the field doing that W and they're going to be home for the first time now taking on a Denver team that is struggling so what would you like to see more out of this Miami team or, or what's the ceiling you think for the Dolphins here Pete one thing that I give them credit for for the New England game New England wasn't going to let them go down the field. No. They were not. They had everybody Free back. Safeties, all that. And back. Mike yep. McDaniel in the past has continued to try and do that. And he was less stubborn this time around. And so was Tua. He took the check downs. They ran the ball. That's growth. And I think that's a good thing for the Miami Dolphins. It's a good thing for Tua. It's, you know, the one throw down the sideline was a terrible throw. Uh, it was just it was underthrown. Yeah. I mean, was he, he, he leads them get over And that was the only time bad. they really did try and go down right. the field. And, 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 so, and he had him. He just underthrown. Yeah. And so I think from that standpoint, I think that's growth for the Dolphins. I think defensively, not having Phillips in there, but boy, Van Ginkle was all over the place. They have guys. Van Joe's a great, a great defensive coordinator. And I think as they get guys back, you know, Ramsey Phillips back, else. Ramsey, watch out for that team. I, I, look, I, I didn't think they would be as good as they are right now, and it's only two games, and the Chargers stink on defense. We know that, and New England's not great, but you win those two games on the road to open the season, you're sitting pretty in, in the, your division. What I love about them is they're finding different ways to win. They're kind of reinventing themselves. They're not just a big play offense. They can matriculate the ball down the field. They can play good defense. They can generate some turnovers and pressures, even without some of their best players. That's the sign of a team that's good, that's going to be eventually great if they can keep this up throughout the course of the season. The only reservation this is always going to be the case moving forward is Tua. Can he stay healthy? Can they protect him? Right now, he's getting the ball out of his hand in about 2.3 yeah. seconds. And if that's the case the rest of the season, good luck opposing defenses. You will not be able to touch them the whole time. Yeah, nobody's nobody's getting near. I mean, the, the Chargers didn't. They have two great pass and, rushers. And watch, by the way, how many copycats end up taking this fast motion by the tight end to the outside like we saw with Durham Smythe. That puts you in such a predicament having the run off of that, the pass option, whether it's to Tyreek Hill or to the tight end up. It gives you so many answers as a quarterback as far as man zone. And on top of it, it's just it's difficult to stop right at the snap of the ball like that. But... There are also people around the league saying this week that maybe the Patriots have come up with some sort of blueprint to try to play Miami, too. Just play off and make them be patient because eventually you're going to make some mistakes. And I'd rather, the, the I'd rather have this. The same thing can be said about the New England Patriots. Eventually, Max is going to make mistakes. True. It's, it, that's nobody thinks nature. that's a high flying offense, though. They think this is a high flying offense. True. But, so you, play but you also get those guys in space. And like we saw, yeah, Tyreek Hill was limited in the big plays. Still found himself in the end zone, didn't he? Yeah, but he didn't have a lot of yards and he didn't. It, it doesn't have to. It's the effectiveness and the efficiency of it. And that's what they came away with. He's always arguing this he guy. Yeah, she likes to chat. I think, you, I think you should have the Dolphins higher. Really? Yeah. Well, waving a pom pom. I, they're two and zero oh right now. I, Give I, them look, credit. I, I gave them credit. They're pretty high up on those rankings. They're six. They should be four. Okay. If you say so, I disagree with you. Over the Ravens and the Chiefs, if we continue to take a look at the back half of the top ten, a handful of teams moving into those slots. The Commanders, what played felt like the longest game of the weekend with the Broncos, but a big win for them on the road, Pete. Well, by the way, uh, we thought that game was over and walked out of here and started leaving and then saw the Hail Mary. And when what um, should have been a P.I. Yeah. At the end of it, they should have had another shot I mean, at that. Yeah, they did everything they could to blow that mm -hmm. game, but you got to give them credit coming back from 21-3. I mean, they were down 21-3, yeah. and then Russell Wilson fumbled and didn't reach for it. Is that a business decision, Pete? Yeah.
course it was a bit. If I'm in that meeting, what would you him, have done? I would have put my arms out there and grabbed the damn football. I don't know. You always say what's good for me is good for me. I don't care. Well, his his right arm isn't that great anymore, so grab the football. <laughs> I mean, I did not like the fact that he left it sitting there. He stared at it for a couple seconds. That was ridiculous. Well, maybe he didn't see it. You know, it he turned the whole to see things downfield. So it maybe. turned the whole game around. They went down, made a 21-11 after they get the two-point play, and off they went. And commanders are better than people give them credit for. I said it before the season. Now, did I not say it? No, that is the whole point of why they're ranked number eight, though. <laughs> See, the reality I started is them up high. they shouldn't be ranked at eight. You've got them at eight because you said before the season that's they, the only reason you've got them in the spot. If I believe a team's good, yeah, exactly, then they move up. Exactly. And they, that's okay, why. Go ahead, and by the way, ahead. they have a tough one this week. Yeah, we'll see how Buffalo. this goes forward. Buffalo. Yeah. Buffalo, tough game. That one might be tough to hit that six and a half season. Sam Howell's playing well, though. Oh, and Eric Bannum, done a good job, too, yeah. diagramming some stuff up in the offense. Yeah. That was a big question mark. we got playmakers. You almost wonder. And when you look at Pittsburgh last night, maybe Mike Tomlin would have wished he would have interviewed Eric Bieniemy for the office. Yeah. I'm just saying. Good call. If there was a vacancy there. Good I'm call. Saying. Again, we're talking about potential shift in conferences. The NFC has not one but two divisions featuring three 2-0 teams. Again, taking a look at the power rankings from 1 to 10. If we go out to 11 through 20, Pete, the Jets still in the top 20. You move them nine slots down after moving them four slots down from winning against Buffalo. But, of course, that game at Dallas, Zach Wilson with three interceptions in that game. You, you are what you are when you have no quarterback. I mean, that's pretty simple. And he, he they didn't run the ball. Well, Robert Sala said he played well, besides, you know, getting outside of himself in a few throws. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, that means you're not playing well then. And they didn't run the ball. That was a surprise to me. I figured they'd go in there and try and be physical and, you know, go right at that defense, and they didn't do it. And Brees Hall wasn't happy with his four carries. You saw that. He's, he's a little upset about it. Uh, they're great defense that... Well, it's a good defense. It can be a great defense, but it's hard to play, Brady, when you know your quarterback's not very good. But look, you've got to play a specific style of football in order to win, like we saw last year with Zach Wilson. To your point, you run the football, you play good defense, you limit what you're asking him to do. Screens, boots, deep play action. You're not asking him to do a ton as far as reading the field. You're, all, you're going to base everything off your pure progressions. And so you don't say, hey, look at the defense and tell you which way to go with it, whether it's one high or two high or however you go about dissecting it. The reality is just telling people, one, two, three, four, five. Keep it simple. You do that, he, I think he can process and play a little better, and I think he can utilize his athleticism to take off and run when it's not there. That, to me, is the formula. They did not utilize that versus Dallas. They're going to have to. when your left tackle's getting whipped on every play. I, and I understand that, and that's, that's a big challenge. Everyone wants to use the excuse of, hey, he was pressure on 70% of the plays. Okay, that doesn't mean you have to throw three interceptions. I agree. Like, it also like, doesn't you mean still you get away from, from the, the run. You got to run the ball. If you take away the pressure, you got to run the football. By the way, we're not going to talk about this, but you did move the Browns down 10 spots, yeah. which is, I think, the biggest move down of any team of your power rankings. In large part because uh, I just I say it. Two weeks because Deshaun Watson's been awful. Yeah, there you go. He's been awful. And I had the Browns as a playoff team. I, I did the too. Season. I did too. I do not think that's a playoff team. Whether Nick Chubb's in there or not, I don't like the quarterback. The way he's playing, he looks like a different guy. He's, it's just maddening okay, to okay. watch. Okay, okay. But the defense is playing at a level where if he can take care of the football, which it seemed like that thing was a wet bar of soap last night in the game, and if they can get what they got out of Jerome Ford moving forward, which I is a Jerome big Ford. ask, it, you know, I think they can piece this thing together depending on how the rest Their of the season goes. Their offensive line had some issues on um, against the Steelers as well. Well, I think the Steelers are pretty darn good. Yeah. I mean, T.J. Watt, you know, Highsmith, both those guys can get after Again, them. though, they're supposed to be a dominant offensive line. And I know they had a rookie right tackle in there last night, but the left tackle had real problems on the other side as well. I, I just, I'm worried about Deshaun Watson. I just don't think, I never thought he was an elite quarterback to begin with. I thought he was a good quarterback. But you, and they're I pot just, committed. They're not going to be able to move on from even after this year. It's, it's I get a two-year deal. Doesn't mean I had to be pot committed. I, before the season, I thought he would get better. He hadn't got me. He it's has two not, games in the season. Let's yeah. pump the brakes on this. Well, I, yeah, look, we're, we're talking about this week's power. They're one and one right now. They're not an 0-2 football team. Brady Quinn taking up for the Browns. They mentioned your name on the broadcast last night as one of the old draft well, picks. Well, some dealing some injuries as well. And then 21 through 32, of course, we put the Texans and the Cardinals down at the drop note there. The Bengals, Pete, we've seen them come back from 0-2 before, but does it feel different this year? I'm worried about Joe Burrow. I'm worried about that calf. You know, there, there's rumblings that it might Have be you different. ever been more worried about a player's calf? No. Okay. I'm, I mean, because, you know, 2 and 2 and 10, is it a, this might eliminate this year. 
I never said two. I said one. I mean, you're saying it now. Well, you picked him to win the Super Bowl. I, I did. He was my worried? MVP pick. And, yeah. yeah, he was yeah. my MVP pick and to win the Super Bowl. Well, let's put it this way. Both our MVP picks are not off to great starts, but I'm worried about him in terms of his health more than anything. I think they can come back from 0-2 if he's healthy. He doesn't look healthy at no. all. Did they rush him? No, and... and I don't know if they rushed him back. I think he probably wants to be back. He wants to be behind center for his team if he feels like he's capable enough of being able to execute the game plan. And, and look, football players are stubborn by nature. And especially coming off a contract with what you're getting paid, I'm sure he feels the pressure of that as well. The truth is, though, they, they can't win with how things look right now. He's just not capable of being the same player he was. The problem is the drop-off probably to him, to Jake Browning, is significant. Browning's only got one pass attempt in his career. He was obviously a very prolific player at the college level. He is their backup. They Doesn't win the count. season. They, they feel good about it. Um, the truth of the matter is, you know, we'll see what they, what they want to do, but they need to give him some rest. He does not look healthy. It feels like things could only get worse maybe with the calf if they keep him out there. And he's getting the ball out so quick because he he, in the past he could move, he could slide, he can get outside the pocket and create with his legs to get the ball down the field and keep his head up. It's hard to do that when your calf is a problem. Second you know fastest that. getting the ball out of his hand right now. You have to think it has to do with the calf right now and not wanting right. to hit. And, and that means you football. can't get the big shots down the field. Right. Tire power rankings breakdown on CBSSports.com. And then if anyone has any disagreements, feel free to reach Pete. Oh, they will. Twitter. Believe me, they will. Pete, thank you. Brady, thank you. NFL and CBS and Paramount Plus. Six games on the Sunday slate, including Panthers visiting the Seahawks. Bryce Young and Geno Smith in that one.